This is Audra Hicks, your Tennessee Realtor. I wanted to come to you today and talk about why your home may not be selling and staying on the market. So, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned because I put the real in real estate. So, let's talk about price. Price ultimately is what is going to drive people in that door uh, in selling your home. Um, and it depends on the market we're in. Right now, we're not in that market where we did a couple of years ago where people overpaid for homes and had multiple offers on every listing. You didn't even have to get professional picks because really, they already wanted to be in the house and buying that house before you ever got the photographer out there. But... <laughs> I mean, that's the market we used to be in, but we haven't been in that in a couple of years. So you really have to strategically price your home. Yes, price, location, and condition, all three come into play. But ultimately, on condition and location, if you can't fix condition, you're going to have to adjust the price. If you can't help the location, your price is going to come into play. So Ultimately, everything goes back to price. No matter what, it goes back to price. If you wanted to start it out on the market at a higher price, and you want, because ultimately we can guide you, we can tell you comp, we can show you comps, we can tell you what our price opinion would be. Even an appraiser could come in and say a price opinion of, I mean, for easy math, say it's five hundred fifty thousand, and um, you know the market doesn't bear for you to get five fifty. It's only five thirty that you're probably going to end up getting for the house. You don't need to start out at five fifty. If you did, it's probably if you pull comps around there, no matter what the appraiser says, it's gonna it you're gonna have to um strategically price that home or you're gonna see some decreases that you're gonna have to make. And you need to do them in a um a pretty fast time frame versus leaving it on the market for a long time and which could be a detriment to you selling it so also things that come into play too is you know election years are always different um if the interest rates are higher of course they can't afford to if they're uh, if the interest rates were a lot lower they could afford more house where now they can only you're gonna you know get uh pre-approved for a lot lower than what you could have versus if it was a point or two less but um what comes into play too is the property taxes because in their uh loan what their approval for is for x amount that's going to include their taxes and insurance. So whatever that insurance and taxes come out to be, if your taxes are a lot more, then they're not going to be able to buy that property too unless they adjusted price or somehow, um, you know, it's really price. I mean, price comes into play, you know. Um, but the loan officer is going to have to give them the pre-approval let that agent the buyer's agent know um you know what they put in the numbers for the said taxes and insurance and that agent needs to do their due diligence on the front end before carrying them to look at a home that has taxes that are a lot higher than what they can do if that's at the top of their budget and then taxes are higher you know they can't get that house so don't take them there because that's going to get their hopes up on a house and then the seller is going to be like well you should have known before you went to see it but you know that all comes into play um when um you're shopping for houses you always got to do your due diligence on the front end as an agent to see what the taxes are uh, and, um, you know, they'll, they'll figure out their insurance anyway. They've got to, you know, figure all that out after you're under contract, what insurance might be for that house. Uh, you can ask the seller what theirs is, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's what the next buyers, um, will be. But, um, ultimately it comes down to price, whatever market you're in, whatever buyers are willing to pay for that house in the current location and condition that it's in is what you're going to end up getting for your home. Um, if your neighbor sold a year or so ago, 
that comp is not going to really hold weight to what it can get now. You might be able to get more now or less now. You never know. It depends on what market we're in. But if you are not getting any showings, that means you're overpriced. So it's went stale, maybe be on the market for a long time because they think condition is probably going to be it. Or what's wrong with the house if it sits there for a long time. Price is what's wrong with the house. If, if you will listen to your agent, they usually can give you comps and give you their price opinion. But ultimately it comes down to our sellers in that, you know, what they ultimately want to price their home at. We can give them guidance, but like they say, you can lead a horse to water. You can't make them drink it. You know, you have to see, you got to put it out there on the market. Ultimately, we want to get you the highest price that we can get you for that house. And we will in the end. It may not be what you expected or wanted, but it's what it's going to be for the current market. So make sure that you strategically have your house priced right and then you'll get it sold a lot quicker. Make sure it's in as good a condition as it can be in for your budget. If you have other things or updates or the flooring's in bad shape or the paint's in bad shape and, and you know that, that's all maintenance items and condition of the house. And if you can't afford to do all of that on the front end, you're going to have to look at your price point and probably adjust that price. So um, just my two cents on that. I just wanted to come on today and let y'all know. I know in previous videos I've talked about this, I think a few times now, but I just think that it should be something that we talk about uh, as I'm a listing agent and I'm a buyer's agent, so I know the both worlds. And, um, uh, you know, ultimately it comes down to the seller being able to wrap their head around what they have been told. Uh, sometimes they don't and they want to put it on the market for a little higher price or a lot higher price than what you had said. But, you know, you have... It, you have told them on the front end that you, you know, here's what your price will be. Now, keep in mind, if that was a 30 days ago or for, uh, 60 days ago, 90 days ago, the market changes all the time. So even if we thought you could get, you know, you thought you could get 400 for your house and we said, no, 350 then, you might have got 350 then. Now it's a different ball game we're in and it, you might not be able to get 350 So the sooner that you wrap your head around what price point it needs to be in and you get those showings and people are, uh, you know, starting to think here, or you might get offers that are lower, that kind of tells you that it might be overpriced. So um, again, it's up to your seller. It's what they, you know, what they are wanting to get out of their home. And if you can lead them to where you think it needs to be and try to um, let them know by giving them comps, uh, by giving them feedback on all the showings. If the agents will give it to you, sometimes they don't like to, to give you uh, feedback or you have to beg them for it. Um, but if you can give them feedback, that lets them know, hey, okay, we really need to come down to earth and figure this out and let's get the home sold. So ultimately, that's what I want to do for you is get that home sold for what price and for the most that we can at that time. So, um, you know, hopefully this has helped you today. If it has, please like, share and subscribe and I will see y'all tomorrow or the next day or I don't know, next week. <laughs> Bye, y'all.